You are watching the MGN, the Miss Guffey News. In today's documentary, we will discuss the horrifying and terrible events of the Columbine shooting. Not only will we discuss which critical lens works the best, but we will discuss the critical lenses that the opposing side favors. Now, let us begin the journey down the interesting path of Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris. There was once a time where everyone on a school campus could walk around freely without any fear not wondering if the stranger was dangerous or not. This became a figure in the past, and out of all the critical lenses, one clearly stands out. And it's not the Marxist lens, because everything school-related was changed by the cultural aspects. For years, people everywhere after the shooting tried to figure out how to prevent these types of events from happening again. Quote, While experts say there is some value to concrete security measures, Bond says the best way to prevent school shootings is much more abstract, Create an environment where students feel safe enough to share information, whether it's with a teacher or a police officer trained to work in schools." End quote. This is a credible source mainly because the website ends in .org. The website also says that it is your connection to NPR news. The author is also a reliable source as he collaborates with NPR directly. This article has first-person witnesses of school shootings and their opinion as to what works best in school security. There is also expert recommendations to school security. Now back to the analysis. While security measures are needed, the most important aspect is the one-to-one -one communication that a broken person needs. Bullying is a major part of cultural aspects. It may not be one of the shining, lovely aspects, but it is a part of it nonetheless. Many have speculations as to why the two committed the crime that they did. Quote, there was speculation that the two committed the killings because they had been bullied. They were members of a group of social outcasts that were fascinated by goth culture or had been influenced by violent video games and music. However, none of these theories was ever proven." End quote. This quote is from a website that is a newsletter and is part of LLC. Again, these are not .org websites. However, the information on here is roughly the same as primary source information. In these articles, it talks about the boys' early life and later life struggles. It also talks about their daily life as well not to mention all this suspicious behavior. Now back to the analysis. Today there are an enormous number of teens who are being bullied and feel pushed down because of it. Quote, a new study based on a survey of more than 15,000 American high school students found that victims of bullying are nearly twice as likely to carry guns and other weapons at school. An estimated 200,000 victims of bullying bring weapons to school over the course of a month, according to the author's analysis of data from the Centers for Disease Control's 2011 Youth Risk Surveillance System Survey. End quote. While this site is not a .org website, it has evidence for credible sources. For example, evidence from Cohen Children's Medical Center of New York. This article also has direct quotes from credible sources like doctors. There is also evidence from credible surveys. Example, the Centers for Disease Control's 2011 Youth Risk Surveillance System Survey. Now back to the analysis. Due to this unfair part of our culture, the teens who caused the Columbine shooting were probably influenced by their hardships that they had to endure at school. One can make connections to parts of culture or everyday life to the actions of the Columbine shooters. Here's a quote that accurately describes this connection. Klebold and Harris became interested in all things German, war swastikas, and even gave the Hail Hitler salute while bowling or playing card games. They also liked to play violent first-person shooter video games and listen to such German bands as KMFDM and Ramstein. In 1998, during their junior year, the two were arrested after they broke into a van and stole some things out of the vehicle. They were both charged with theft criminal mischief, and criminal trespassing, end quote. With the combination of their beliefs and viewpoints, along with violent video games, it would not be false to rule out those aspects as their influence. 
Now you have heard the cultural lens side. What about the opposing side? One might argue that the Marxist lens is mo most efficient lens to apply to this event. However, Dylan Klebold was, quote, a child of upper middle class parents considered gifted in grammar school, end quote. Eric Harris was also a child of upper middle class parents. Quote, shooters came from all ethnic, economic, and social classes. Most had no history of violence and came from solid two parent homes. End quote. This source is an online magazine. This is a current event platform with writers working for them. In this source, it talks about class differences and bullying in today's culture. It has credible sources like the Secret Service and U.S. Department of Education. Also sources like the FBI. This source has in-depth analysis and educational responses. This was a quote on most school shooters. In conclusion, the Columbine shooting was caused by cultural aspects. There was not much of a social class difference of, or significance. The possible influence for the shooting was most likely not their social class, but their exposure to aspects and hardships in school and culture. Today, the main cause of school shootings has an utterlying aspects of culture hidden. Communication and support from the school can either help a person or lack of it could possibly cause another school shooting.